Hi everybody, welcome back to the final part of our four-part series on Adobe After Effects. I'm Sam Stenson, and I'm a video production intern at Somerville Media Center in Somerville, Massachusetts. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to do some basic typography in After Effects, meaning using After Effects to achieve some text animation, which is great if you want to make a quick, fun little title sequence for a video, or other things, I guess. So last episode, Stuart taught you about keyframing and animation, and I'm going to jump right off from that point, and we're going to start animating with the text function. In case you didn't do your homework and watch the other videos, here's a little recap. The text function is up here. You can also use the shortcut T to switch to the text function. So I've continued working on our amazing project from last time, and I've already typed out a little bit of text here. I just did that by clicking on the display window with the text tool and type it away. But how do I change the font? How do I change the size of the letters? That's this panel right over here. There are two windows that allow you to manipulate text in After Effects. One of them is the paragraph window, which is really only useful if you're typing out paragraphs or using any other form of long form text. Almost everything you can do in the paragraph window, you can also do in the character window. The one thing I do want to highlight here is the alignment function, which if you've ever used Google Docs, Microsoft Word, any of those programs, you should find that it does the same thing. It aligns the text to either the center, to the left, or to the right. So I recommend knowing how you want your text aligned before you go into the character window. This little box right here is how you set the font. You can use any font that you have downloaded and installed on your computer. And here is where you can set the font to normal, bold, italic, any other presets that that font has. Text in After Effects has a stroke and it has a fill. If you don't intend to make your text a little bit more fancy, if you just want some basic text, you can set the color here by clicking on this box. I'm gonna make it red. Oh, now I'm gonna make it red. This box down here allows you to change the size of the stroke, which outlines the text in whatever color you have it set to. Here I have it set to black. You can make the stroke bigger or you can make the stroke non-existent using this slider right here. You can also decide whether you want the stroke to appear over the fill as it does here, or if you want the stroke to blend behind the fill. This controls the size of the font. This one over here controls line spacing. So if I'd like my lines to be closer together or further apart, I can simply slide. This slider controls the spacing of the characters. So you could have a wider spread or you could have the characters all smooshed together. This slider stretches the text vertically, and this slider stretches the text horizontally. And down here, you could use these buttons when your text is highlighted to make any text bold, italic, all caps, no caps, superscript, or subscript. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. I'm not here to control your life. I'm just here to mess around with my discount Pixar logo under the guise of education. Let's get into keyframing, and a lot of this carries over from the last video. I'm going to talk to you about the transform function first. You can use the transform function on a text layer the same way you can on any other layer and it works relatively the same way. You can mess with the opacity down here, rotation up here, scale up a little higher, position even higher than that, and even the anchor point. You can set keyframes here by clicking on the little watch and manipulating from there like you would any other layer. Let's watch. Uh, here's another thing I'm gonna cut out if Stuart talked about it, but I'm gonna talk about the hotkeys that bring up each transform function. For opacity, it's O. Oh, we're not. For opacity, it's T. For position, it's P. For scale, it's S. For rotation, it's R. And for anchor point, it is A. I know I just ran through all of that, but if you keep those hotkeys in mind when you're working, especially if you're starting out in After Effects, they'll become second nature soon enough. Let me just get rid of everything I've done because it is awful. Now we'll get into the functions that are specific just to text, starting with source text. Now, if you activate a keyframe of source text, let's activate one here and scroll a little bit further and activate another one here. That'll allow you to change the content of the text on the keyframe itself. So if I want to change this text from Pixar at the beginning to Carfax at the end, I can do that. And on the keyframe that I placed, it'll change when it reaches that keyframe. This is very, very useful for subtitles because you only need one subtitle track if you're doing that in After Effects. I don't know why you would do it in After Effects, but if you were, you would only need one track for your subtitles and you could change the text 
as it changes in the video. That also means you can change the color and the font of your text on these keyframes if that's something you're into. If we want to make this Carfax this beautiful shade of yellow, we can do that right here and it'll change on the keyframe. There it is. Now let's talk about the path options, and this is where it gets really fun, at least for me. By adding a mask to this layer, and a mask can be any which shape you'd like, I'm going to make whatever that is. And as you can see, it's functioning just like a mask. It's not showing any of the layer outside of the masked area. But if we go down here and look at the path options, under path, you can see none right now because it's following the text path that was set out before. But if we go down here, look at that. That's mask one. That's the mask we just made. ka -ching. And now the text is mapped <laughs> onto that mask. I'm realizing this would be much easier to illustrate if it was just a circle. So I'm going to change it to a circle. And there's a lot of great stuff you can do with this besides making some fun paths for your text. Again, which can be literally anything. Here are some more detailed options you can use. You can reverse the past. You can't reverse the past. You can reverse the path, though, by clicking right here. And that will place your text on the outside of your mask instead of on the inside of your mask. Perpendicular to path will automatically be on. That means that each letter is going to be perpendicular to the part of the path that it's set at. If you turn that off, however, they're going to be straight just the way you type them, but I think it's more fun if you turn those on. Turning on force alignment will spread out the letters evenly on the path that you've made. It's very helpful if you're making a logo or something where you need all of the letters to fit neatly inside of a circle. Here, I don't know what we've done. These two options down here, first margin and last margin, change where the text starts on the mask and where the text ends. So here you can see these two little indicators right here. This is where the text starts on the mask and this is where the text ends. By increasing where it starts, I'll push them closer together. By decreasing where it ends, I'll also push them closer together like that. And they can pass each other as well. And you can kind of space them out as you see fit. And each of these can be keyframed as well. I've spent hours just messing around with these options because you can do some incredibly fun stuff as I'll illustrate right now. Let's move 10 frames over here. I'm going to turn off the reverse path. Another 10 frames. Let's turn off perpendicular to path. Let's go back five frames. Turn off forced alignment. Go forward another 10 frames. Mess with the first margin. Go all the way back here. And mess with the last margin. So yeah, this looks kind of ridiculous, but there's a lot of potential here. The final thing I want to make y'all aware of here is the animate function under your text layer. Clicking on this little playhead right here will bring up this intimidating looking menu. And what you'll see here are a bunch of manipulation options. Some of them are already present in the transform section, so you can just do them down there. Some of them are a little bit more special, such as skew and character offset. So what you're going to want to do is pick something. Uh, I'm going to use scale. You can also click right here to add every single transform property in After Effects to your text if you want to get kind of nuts. But right now we're just going to click on scale. You can see that brought up a little tab down here that says Animator 1. You can add infinite animators to your text if you would like uh, for different properties, and it definitely helps to keep each property on its own animator level for organization's sake. Inside of the animator, it says here Range Selector 1, and we'll get into that a little bit later, and then it says Scale, and here's our scale slider. We can use that to manipulate the text, and that does exactly what you would think it does. It manipulates the scale of the text, and you can use it to keyframe, and manipulate your text like that if you wish. Look at that, our text is growing. Oh, look at that, they grow up so fast. Whoa, every animator works the same way, each one that you add. It'll have the property that you're manipulating down here, and it'll also usually have what is called a selector. Now, there's three kinds of selectors. There's range, there's wiggly, and there's expression. I'll talk about wiggly a little bit, but the main one you're going to be using is range. And you can add that to any one of your animators. You can use it for scale, opacity, size, rotation, does not matter at all. And what the range selector is going to do if you open it down here, it's going to determine how much of your text is affected by this animator. Right now, the range starts at zero and ends at 100%, which means that all of the text is being affected. However, if you start to mess with that, say by starting around 41% and ending at 100%, you'll see we're now only affecting the latter portion of the text. We're not affecting those first two characters or the first 41-ish percent of the characters. You could even use this to isolate specific letters, say if you only want this X right here to get super, super huge. You can tell the animator to start where that X is, indicated by that red line, and end, indicated by this red line. And moving your animator will only affect that letter, big X. 
And the start and the end of your range selector can be keyframed as well, which means that we can set our Pixar text to start at zero and end at zero, being unaffected by the scale completely. And then two seconds later, we can envelop the entire line with it. And it'll have each letter pop out in sequence, kind of like a Pixar intro. Keep in mind, you can do this with anything. You can do this with color as well. I'll show you that right now. We're gonna click add. We're gonna add a property. Uh, we're gonna select RGB here. And we'll keep the fill color as its default, as red. And now this fill color keyframe right here is set to our range selector and it'll be manipulated the same way. So if all goes well, our letters should turn red at the same time that they grow large. Nailed it. Something you can use this for is creating a sort of wave effect in your text if you want specific parts of your text highlighted at different times. So right now the start of our range selector does not move at all from the beginning, but we're gonna change that a little bit. Once we get two letters into our wave, I'm gonna set a keyframe at zero in the start tab of our range selector. And after everything finishes, I'm gonna put another keyframe here for the start and increase that to 100%. So now the range of our scale and color effects at the end are 100% to 100%, so it is affecting nothing again. Let's watch what happened. Not perfect, but I hope you understand what I'm getting at and how you can use that to give your titles a little bit more pizzazz. Here's another great option. Let's say you want to animate text that has more than one line, more than one word. Uh, I'm going to type some made up words into this text box. And I'm also going to disable this mask here because honestly, it's more distracting at this point. All right, now that I've fixed that, we have a couple of lines of text split up into a couple of words here. So the wave that we've created is affecting each letter individually. But what if you want the effect to affect each word or each line and not each letter? You can do that by going down here, below your animator, into the advanced settings of your animator. There's a lot of other advanced settings down here and they're all really interesting, but what we're gonna focus on the most is right here. I would recommend keeping the unit set on percentage. It's just the easiest way to go about it considering how everything else in the program works. But down here, it says that this percentage is based on characters. That's why it's highlighting each letter individually. We can also set it to words. Now let's see how that's changed our animation. There we go. So now the wave goes word by word. You can do the same thing by going down here and setting it to lines. And that will go by each line of text. Here's something you can do with that that has almost infinite uses. We're gonna go and reset all of our keyframes here, delete our scale and fill color animators. You can also just delete an animator at any time by selecting it and just pressing delete. All right, so we're gonna add a new animator and we're gonna choose opacity. Opacity automatically comes with a range selector, which is great. We're actually going to decrease our opacity here to zero. Now make sure you're decreasing the opacity within the range selector and not the opacity of the transform function itself. It's pretty easy to get confused there. We're gonna go ahead and put our start at 100 and our end at zero and keyframe both of those wherever you want the effect to start. Then gonna scroll down 10 or so seconds and place our secondary keyframes. And I'm going to extend the end of our opacity all the way out. I know it looks like it just says Carfax up there, but scroll back to the beginning and press play. And you can see our letters are appearing one by one as if they're being typed or texted or something like that. If you want it to look a little more natural, like it's actually being typed or texted and not fading in, you can go back into the advanced options down here and take the smooth list down to 0%. And each letter is going to appear just like that. So that's the end of what I'm actually going to be teaching you, but I'll leave you off with an example of how many options you actually have with everything I just went over. Let's start by keyframing the source text, going right into the middle here, and uh, completely changing up everything that I said. Let's actually change up the color and the font as well, right at the end. Next, let's create a really weird path for our text and link it. We're then gonna use the first margin tool Keyframe right here, skim to the end, and keyframe right here. We're gonna increase the first margin to give this all a scrolling effect and scroll the text along the mask that we've created here to make things even more confusing. Let's add another animator down here for skew. You can see that's given us a range selector as well. Let's make the skew 42. How bad is that? That's pretty bad, perfect. Now let's go into the range selector one here 
Let's have it start and end at zero for now. We'll keep the start, scroll all the way down here to the end, and kick the end into 100%, so it's all skewed by the end. And finally, let's use the transform function down here. Let's get the rotation keyframed, and use this to rotate our entire text. All right, now let's watch our masterpiece. Whoa, okay. This is not going how I expected it to go at all, but I guess that's part of the fun, I guess. Oh my god, this is confusing. Are you learning anything? I'm not learning anything. Okay, there we go. And with that, that's our intro to typography and After Effects. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I hope you learned something uh, from this video and from the series as a whole. I hope you were able to create your own nonsensical title sequences uh, at your computer at home. Once again, this has been video production intern Sam Stenson for Somerville Media Center. I hope you enjoyed, and let us know if you'd like to see more tutorial series like this. We had a lot of fun making it. Thanks. Bye.